Welcome back to this final lecture of CCNA3 Scaling Networks with me, Joachim Sjöderstad from the University of Skövde. And ending this uh, CCNA3 lecture series, we're going to look at Chapter 10, OSPF Tuning and Troubleshooting. And what we're more exactly going to do is to dig into OSPF and multi-access networks, and we're going to look a little bit about how we can influence the election pro process of designated routers and backup designated routers. And then we're going to look at default route pro propagation, tuning OSPF interfaces, and we're going to end with some troubleshooting of single and multi-area OSPF 2 and OSPF 3. Uh, I'm going to keep this last lecture only to one practical demonstration, so you can uh, so you can go do it on your own. So uh, to begin, we're going to look at some common network types, and this is just a listing listing of the network type network types that we usually encounter. So first, we have what we call point-to-point -point networks. And those are two routers. Well, this isn't the main routers. So this is two routers that are interconnected over a common link. No other routers can be on this link. So it's just point to point. And this is often the configuration when it comes to wide area network links. And then we have broadcast multi-access. And these, this is multiple routers that are interconnected over an ethernet network. And we have the non-broadcast multi-access, which is multiple routers in connected over a network that can be common for more than two routers but it does not allow broadcasts so one example is the sort of legacy frame relay that we're going to look at a little bit i think in ccna4 then we also have point to multipoint which is multiple routers that are in interconnected in a hub and spoke topology over a non-broadcast multi-access network and this is often used to connect branch sites to a central site and then we have Virtual Link, which is a special OSPF network that is used to interconnect distance, distant OSPF areas to the backbone area. And so why we are saying this is, well, because we're going to look more on OSPF and multi-access networks. And as we touched, multi-area multi networks cause for loads of adjacencies and therefore a extensive flooding of LSAs. And this is a problem because with this extensive flooding of LSA, uh, LSAs, it's a lot of load on the network whenever there is a topology change. So the solution to this is that we elect a designated router on the, on the network, and that router is in charge of collecting and distributing LSAs. So what would happen here is that whenever there is a topology change that is seen by a router, it would send an LSA to the designated router, and the designated router would distribute it to the other routers in the area. Uh, in case the designated router fails, we also need to elect a backup designated routers and all of the other uh, routers in the network will be called druthers. So I'm uh, seeing that or I'm guessing that you think that there are a lot of abbreviations within the topic of data communications. Some of them like designated router being DR does actually mean something and some others uh, like drother are uh, a bit harder to, uh, to maybe uh, say, see where they come from. So uh, the final thing that you need to know uh, is that routers will only form full adjacencies with uh, DRs and BDRs and adjacencies with routers if you do the show IPOSPF neighbor command will be seen as two ways. And that is if you remember the OSPF process and uh, it's only after the two way state that routers are beginning to exchange LSAs and routers are not going to exchange LSAs with each other so therefore they will be stuck in the two way adjacency state which is perfectly fine so if you see uh, an output of IPOSPF uh, neighbors and you see that there are full adjacencies with DRs and BDRs and then there are two way adjacencies with other routers those other routers will be the routers and this is OSPF working as uh, working as expected in a multi-access network. So let's look a little bit more on the LSAs in multi-access. Uh, so when a topology change occur, a router will send an LSA to the designated router and the backup designated router. And then only the designated router is going to flood this LSA in the network. And as we've been saying, without a designated router, uh, any router would have to flood the LSA to all routers who would in turn flood them again and this would cause for a very extensive flooding of LSA packages. So let's look on how we elect the designated router and the backup designated router. 
the criteria are as follows. So the first prior, the for, first criteria is the configured priority. So the configured priority is a value that is set on the interface level with the command IP OSPF priority and then a value that is between zero and 255. Uh, highest wins and priority zero, which happens to be the deep or priority zero means that a router can never be a designated router and priority one is the default. Uh, so if we haven't configured uh, priorities and or the priorities are equal, then the highest router ID will win. So a router ID, as we explored before, will be one of the following. Either it's a manually configured value that is configured with a router ID command, or it's going to be highest configured IPv4 on a loopback. And if that doesn't exist either, it's going to be the highest configured IPv4 on any physical interface. And note, note here is that if you have a full IPv6 environment, then you have to manually configure the router ID using the router ID command. And luckily the router is going to tell you when you do the router OSPF command. So that's it for how the election uh, process ha happens or how the, the criteria for the election process. So let's look at the election process in action a little bit. So as soon as a um, router that is an OSPF router comes online to a multi-access network, the election is going to happen. So. Uh, so this is quite uh, quite important because if there is only two routers up, one of them will be uh, will be the will be the designated router. And what you need to know is that the router will stay the designated router until it either fails or the OSPF process is stopped, or the interface on the network fails or is shut down. And what happens when the designated router fails is that a backup designated router becomes the designated router and there will be a new election round, but that's only going to be for the backup designated router. And something to note here is that the election is not preemptive, so if you get elected designated router, you will stay designated router even if a higher priority router comes online. So uh, this can actually cause for some interesting scenarios, like if you're booting the routers at the same time, but they have vastly different booting time, the router that is first in line will be the designated router, and it will stay the designated router no matter what priorities you configure. So one way to overcome this is to do the privileged executive command clear IP OSPF uh, process on one of the routers, and that is going to start, uh, restart the OSPF process and therefore force a re-election. Uh, that's something to know about. So moving on to a slide on the default route. Um, as with any routing protocol, you can of course configure a default route on uh, an OSPF enabled router, and you can have OSPF uh, distribute that uh, route within the network. You do this by the com OSPF command default information originate and that is uh, an equivalent to redistribute static within uh, within EIGPR. So then you can also tweak hello and dead timers if you want. That's done on the interface uh, level. You do it with IP OSPF hello interval or IP OSPF dead interval and then X which is the amount of seconds. So you have to know that again timers must match in order for for an adjacency to form and be maintained. So that said, let's do a little demo where we're going to look at some of these stuff and then we're going to get back to some troubleshooting before we conclude this course. And so for this, uh, for this demonstration, what we have is a multi-area network uh, or a multi-access network, not a multi-area. And we have three routers and we have one switch. So what we're going to do is that we're going to look at how we can influence the election. So we're going to do this from router A here. And if we look at a router A and we do a show run, I'm first going to show you that the OSPF process here or the uh, OSPF interface is configured with an IP OSPF priority of 255, which is the highest possible priority. So uh, if I do a, a show show IP OSPF neighbors, we can see that we have we have one neighbor with the ID of 192.168.31.33 and that's a drother and then we have one uh, that is ending with .22 and that's BDR and this means that RA that we're working with in this case is the designated router. So what we want to do now is change the priority and ensure that the 
uh, that uh, this router that we're working on stops being the designated router. So the way that we would do that is that we go to configure terminal, uh, we do interface and it was interface gig zero zero. And we're going to change the priority. So we do IP OSPF priority and we do zero. And zero ensures that this router cannot be the designated router. So changing the priority as so, and then just to show you that nothing happens just by this, I'm going to do the show IP OSPF neighbors again. And you can see that we still have one BDR and one router neighbor, meaning that we're still the designated router. But if we do clear IP OSPF process, and then we're going to actually do that, yes. Then you can see the stuff gets down, stuff gets up, everything is redone. And if we do show IP OSPF neighbors, you can see that now we have one neighbor being the designated router, and we have another neighbor being the backup designated router. And so that's how we need, well, that this is what we need to do if we want to change the priority and re uh, and enforce a re-election. So while we're here, I actually also want to show you how to redistribute a static default route. So let's just look here at what routes we are, uh, or at what networks that we're redistributing within the OSPF area. And because my idea is to do a static default route to the loopback interface right here. Uh, or actually, we're going to do a new loopback interface. So we go to configure your terminal. I'm just going to do a loopback interface loopback and let it be loopback2. And we do an IP address of 10, 10, 10, 1, 255, and that's going to be it. Now we're going to do a static default route configured here. So we do IP route uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, out loopback2. And uh, looking at a local route table with, with show IP route, we can see, do show IP route, we can see that we have a gateway of last resort. So we're going to dig into the OSPF process with IP OSPF, no, I'm, I'm definitely getting towards the business end of this course. So we do router OSPF one, and then we do our default information originate. Uh, so if we fast forward time a little bit, we're just going to go into one of the other routers. So go router B, enable, and I'm going to do show IP route just to show you here that now there is a gateway of last resort that is learned through OSPF. And this is indicated by the O star E2, meaning that it's an external route learned through OSPF. Uh, so that's actually it for this practical so let's move on to the very few finishing slides of the theoretical material so um first i just want to stress that the forming of adjacencies is completely vital for any routing protocol to work including ospf of course and adjacencies will not form uh, unless ip or the interfaces are configured to be on the same networks you also have to ensure that the ospf network types match you have to ensure that the hello and dead timers match. Uh, you have to ensure that interfaces are not incorrectly configured as passive, as we talked about before. Remember that you can configure an, er, an interface as a passive interface to prohibit the router from sending routing updates out that interface. That, that is usually done for interfaces that only has end devices connected to it. But if you do it on a link where you actually want the router to form an adjacency, it's not going to work. Uh, you may also miss or uh, misconfigure network commands, misconfigure authentication, which is luckily for you not a part of this course. And finally, you have to ensure that each interface is properly addressed using correct IP addressing, correct subnet, uh, submasks, and enabled using the no-shutdown command. Ending this uh, course, we have some commands that are use useful for you. Remember, show IP protocols that is going to show you a summary of the configurations for any uh, dynamic routing protocol. Then we have show IP OSPF neighbors for showing OSPF neighbors as we just demonstrated. We also have show IP OSPF interface to show information about interfaces that participates in the OSPF process. 
Uh, we have show IP route and show IP route OSPF that will single out the OSPF learned routes. And we have the clear IP OSPF process. And note here that I say clear that I say process number, and you can actually apply the process number to any of the OSPF show commands. And this is because you can have different uh, OSPF running OSPF processes running on the same router if you like to. Um, so finally, if you want to do a look at stuff for IPv6, simply change IP for IPv6. With that said, I hope that you will be going to the practicals and work practically with this um, with this theoretical foundation that you now have. I want to say thank you for your attention throughout this course. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also want to say that if you like this way of teaching, if you like this course, and you want to take some uh, some training in in person, and you may want to follow a complete study program to get a, get a diploma and a degree, the University of Khoda has loads of uh, loads of courses within within IT, loads of programs on both bachelor and master level. So go into www.his.se to see what the University of Khoda has to offer for you. Uh, and if you're a remote student coming from another country than Sweden, you can even take some programs. Uh, as distance programs that we offer to, to the entire world. So thank you for your attention. It's been good to have you. My name is Joachim Sjöverstad from the University of Skövde and I will hope to see you next time.